So the dialect of uh, of Warrington, it's, it's, a, it's a little different from here, huh? Right. So Just like my friends, they don't know what a pack of nabs is. <laughs> they call it a pack of peanut butter crackers. We call it a pack of nabs. <laughs> yeah. Well, most of my life, I ended up like you know coming back and forth to Raleigh, so I was okay. pretty. I'm pretty uh, adjusted to the accent, but a lot of people tell me I have a country accent. <laughs> do you think you do? Yes, but it's not indicative of Franklinton. I just have a different, my mama doesn't say anything like me. It's just the way I talk, I guess. When I got here or when I go somewhere else, people can tell that I'm from an urban area because I talk different, I guess, differently. It definitely is a different dialect because I guess there's a certain slang to our words that how we talk in Durham, so. Go. <laughs> oh, we, try, we took, we took we Chapel did. Hill off. I was actually born in Charleston, South Carolina, and then I went to England when I was five. So how do people react to your speech? They don't understand why I don't sound like I'm from here, even though I'm technically from here and that kind of stuff. There's quite a good mix of different dialects, you know. But nobody who speaks the Okra Code Brogue. I don't believe I've run into anyone with some Brogue yet. Hey, right, have a good evening. When I came down here, I thought most people with southern accents, there was only one sort of common southern accent, if you, if you can say that. Uh, and now that I've been here, I realized, no, there's very different kinds of dialects that people speak with different twangs, uh, some of them more pronounced than others. Kentucky is technically the south, and I have what some people would say is a, is a southern accent. I sometimes say that the mountains are on my tongue, and, um, you know, I think that if you embrace dialects, you're embracing people in, in different cultures. I feel very strongly that language is a critical part of how we acquire and learn culture. Uh -huh. And so to the extent that North Carolina State is uh, an institution that serves all of North Carolina, and in that very broad sense, the language and the dialects and what you hear on campus is part of the vibrant sort of environment that, that makes this truly a university. I think that supporting language diversity is one of the strong points about NC State. They always say, I love your accent, and then we'll go from there, so where is this accent from and things like that. Yeah. Then I'll talk about Cameroon. I have all 10 colleges represented in my world population and food prospects course in many, many countries. So we use the linguistic diversity in my classroom to build trust and confidence and respect, and it makes all the difference in the world by the end of the semester. Uh, Mi nombre es Daniel Marcelo Farfán Estremadoiro. Soy de La Paz, uh, Bolivia. At first, especially my advisor, I had problems getting almost a, half of what he was saying. But right now, I'm, I'm good at it, and you can hear I'm also getting some of the accent. On your dialect sort of depends on where you grew up at, and that kind of defines you as a person but I don't necessarily think it'll define your goals or how you act or what you do. Oh, Watch Gilbert, oh, Bam. right here. Somebody there are there. students here that, you know, sound like a stereotypical Southern person, but they still attend the top university and I mean, I guess yeah, they're, it out. yeah, they're still excelling. So yeah. definitely, um, it just, I guess it breaks the stereotype or yeah. says that like, you know, if, even if we are country or we're a farming school, we're like we're the top. <laughs> we are intelligent, so we're proud of that. <laughs> Born and raised in Hickory, North Carolina, growing up we were like the only Chinese family around. I teach uh, English 101 here, so I get to teach students, like incoming first years, about language diversity and about dialects and have them re-examine their own language prejudices. You know, language is a part of their natural life, so it's something that they can readily talk about and, um, you know, and embrace. Issues of language diversity are really complex. You know, they're interwoven with other issues of race and, and sex and gender, uh, and, you know, they, they make up one part of our identity. Uh, and it's really difficult to try to tease one out from the other. And so since we have a, a, a general awareness that, that it's not right to discriminate against people based on, on sex, on, on you know, race, um, sexual orientation, these types of things, uh, we're just trying to raise awareness that, that part of all these other identities is really tied up in the language that people use. And when we do discriminate against people based on their language, we're also discriminating in them based on their, their sex, their gender, their ethnicity, etc. We're proud that we have students from all 100 counties in the state, 
and we're equally proud that we have students from 53 different states and territories in America. Uh, and, and we have students from 119 different countries. So literally, you can walk across this campus and experience uh, a myriad of dialects. Where else would you find this many people from so many different places in one little spot? Where finding the natives is hard. Yes, it's very hard <laughs> to find the natives. <laughs>